So welcome everybody and happy holidays to our November uh, CPUG meeting. Like Wes said, this is going to be our last CPUG meeting for the year. We like to take off a couple months in like December, January, so people can, you know, take a break for the holidays, um, come back feeling refreshed, and we'll pick it up probably end of January, beginning of February. So be on the lookout for meetup postings in 2023. Um, so really quickly, um, I'm going to do our group intro that we typically do, and then I have a couple announcements for end of year, about end of year survey, and then I'll pass it off to uh, Nicola to do the presentation on field parameters. So who are we for folks who haven't joined before or folks who need a refresher maybe? Um, we are Seattle Power BI enthusiasts um, focused on the west side of Seattle, the Seattle area, based out of Seattle, but clearly not Seattle exclusive. Uh, we love being virtual and being able to host folks from all over the world. Uh, super exciting to see the reach of this community um, and why we just love getting together and um, learning from one another and sharing knowledge and helping one another to grow as experts in this community. A um, couple of reminders, if you are comfortable, we'd love to see your smiling faces on cameras, love to see people participating. Totally understand if you are off camera to, you know, eat lunch or stuff in this noon hour. Um, also, just we're here to learn from one another. So remember to be open and welcoming and respectful to one another and understanding of different people's um, viewpoints and opinions. So announcements, I'm very excited to announce that we're launching an end of year feedback survey, which I'll drop in the chat shortly. Um, it's pretty short. It's nine or it's eight questions, I believe. Um, so and it's also anonymous. So if you have some burning feedback, um, like we really don't want to see that intro anymore or we don't want to see Alina hosting anymore, um, you know, try and keep it the roast pretty sensitive, but it's definitely anonymous. So feel free to. Um, drop that there in that survey. We want to make this community as good as possible and um, serve you as best as possible. There's also places to leave a contact info if you want to um, sign up to present or like lead a topic in the next year. So um, we'd love to see you do that there. And we really appreciate taking the, you guys taking the time to, to make this community um, as great as possible. Um, another reminder, we also just post these recordings to YouTube. So we'll drop the, the link to our channel there. Um, you know, subscribe and see. You can watch our previous month's uh, meetup recording there if you missed Ruth from Kerbal. And then, yeah, so if you want to get involved, we're always welcoming um, new speakers and folks who want to um, help grow this community. Uh, feel free to drop that stuff in the survey or to reach out to any one of us on the call, um, myself, uh, Wesley, Gaston, Andrew, or Russ. We're all super excited to uh, help this community grow and succeed. And now, without further ado, I will pass it off to Gaston to introduce Nicola. Great, great. Uh, happy to be here uh, again. Thank you very much, Nicola, to be, to be here. Uh, I'm kind of grateful to present Nicola on the, the, this, this Seattle Power BI user group. It's going to be a pretty interesting topic, an awesome topic. Nicola, I, I met Nicola talking about soccer first and then a lot about data platform. He's been pushing a really great insights around Power BI, around Synapse. He's awesome in what is coming next in terms of understanding the end-to-end -end solution. He did a really great job with Andy Cutler around the DP500 exam in terms of understanding where we land synapse, where we land Power BI, what, where, where is the mixing and purview in the middle of that of that one. He's also a Microsoft MVP in Data Platform and a really great friend. So, Nicola, happy to be here, happy to present and host you in the Seller Power BI group. Thank you very much for your kind words. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks for, first of all for inviting me and thanks for all your kind words. Okay, then uh, I'll start sharing my screen. And 
let me just move this here and we can slowly start. So uh, once again, thanks for the invitation. Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending in which part of the planet you currently are. And welcome to the last meeting of Seattle Power BI user group in this year. Uh, today we will dive deep into one of the coolest features introduced in Power BI in recent times. And there were many of them, so the competition is really high. And I'll show you what are field parameters in Power BI and how to leverage them in some common real life use cases. Uh, before we start short introduction, so Gaston told almost everything, just uh, a few more things. Uh, my name is Nikola Ilic. I'm originally from Belgrade in Serbia, but I live uh, for last almost seven years in the wonderful city of Salzburg in Austria, uh, where I work as an independent data platform consultant and trainer. Uh, uh, living in Salzburg was the reason why I've chosen this nickname, Data Mozart. I guess you all know that Salzburg is uh, worldly famous as a birthplace of uh, of this great composer. So I was brave enough to use his last name as part of my nickname, and that's why I'm trying to make music from the data. Uh, other than that, you can find me on the web. I'm blogging at data-mozart.com. I'm also active on social media like LinkedIn and Twitter. So feel free to to connect if you like. Uh, other than that, multiple year, uh, multiple year experience working with different data products, predominantly Microsoft data platform, and privately father of two kids, and through football and Barca fan, as you can conclude looking at this photo on the screen. One important disclaimer before we jump into the action. Uh, field parameters is still a preview feature. Uh, that means two things. First of all, don't be surprised if you open Power BI Desktop and you don't see uh, the option to use field parameters. So you first need to enable this feature under options and settings and go to options and under preview features, select field parameters. That's first disclaimer. The second disclaimer is because this is uh, still the feature which is in preview, it may happen that uh, some of the things that we are covering today are not relevant in few months. So if you are watching these recordings uh, on Seattle Power BI user group channel in a few months, don't course me because I told something. Maybe it's relevant today, maybe in a few months it won't be relevant anymore. So uh, please take everything that I covered today, please take everything with some, uh, uh, don't take it 100% for granted. So things will still change as we seen yesterday in this latest uh, Power BI November update there were some uh, uh, improvements to field parameters and dynamic slicers, so things are going to change. Okay, so in dark ages of Power BI, if you wanted to dynamically switch the axis uh, uh, of the visual, for example, between the products and countries, you had to write a quite exotic DAX code and apply various tricks uh, of using 3 tests DAX function. So let me quickly show you what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, so this is my simple, very simple uh, visual that shows uh, total sales amount uh, for brand names. Now the idea is to enable uh, uh, report users to switch between uh, brand names and countries on the on the uh, axis of this visual. So as I said, that required to do something like this. I mean, not necessarily. Uh, 100% this way, but let me show you. So first of all, uh, you would have go and create a table like I'll do now. I'll explain what I'm doing just uh, a second. So new table. Always praying to demo gods when we are doing it live. So just a moment. Okay, maybe I need to write it down. Copy paste doesn't work. So brands and countries. And basically what I'm going to do, I will create a Cartesian product of all distinct values that exist in a brand name column and country column. So I'll use not add columns. I'll use cross join. And then I will take all the distinct values from 
brand name column and I will return my row which will call axis and the second one will be brands. I hope I don't miss any comma or uh, uh, or brackets and the other one is cross join of all distinct values that exist in my uh, it's called region country name I think hopefully yes and here I introduce row and axis and here we have countries so don't pay too much attention I just want to show you how easy it is to achieve this behavior to switch between uh, different attributes on on axis so this one uh, this one and this one this should work Yes, it works. So now it's not a brand name. It's I will call it a value. So basically because we have uh, both products and uh, uh, countries in this uh, column, I will call this value. And then let me show you the measure that I need to create. So I'll go to my online sales table, create a new measure. Let me see if now this prepared script will work or not. No, it doesn't work. I'm really surprised. Maybe let me check in report view. This is the latest version from yesterday, so maybe it has still some <laughs> bugs. No, it doesn't work. Never mind. So that let me quickly write this code. So sales amount three tests, I will call it that way. So I need to do some uh, checking of certain conditions and if this one has one value so I'll take axis from my newly created table brands and countries and then I want to switch basically switch again taking distinct values from my axis uh, values from my axis that's fine so again, don't pay too much attention. I just want to demonstrate how how uh, a complex DAX is to achieve a very simple business request to be able to switch between uh, different attributes on on uh, uh, on the axis of the visual. So here I need to return sales amount, I think. Yeah, and then uh, then it goes with three tests, three tests, and here I will substitute this with values and here we go with value column from my brands and countries that's for countries uh, then at least I think I can copy paste this for geography let me check so um, geography uh, what do you need a region country name okay region country name and then um, OK, so that will not work this way. Mm, region country name. So we have value or have region country name. Uh, close this, close this and then let's do the same for brands. OK, brands and now we need to do calculate some again and sales amount. OK then we do again our three test magic and we substitute this with values from our value column from brands and countries and finally we are substituting brand name for product table let's close all of these brackets and pray that this is going to work one more No syntax errors. OK, did a good job. Uh, then now what I need to do is to put this measure on my uh, this sales amount retest. I will put this measure here. OK, and the final thing is that I will move this the old one. So nothing happens at the moment and what I need to do is to uh, put my axis on axis instead of brand name and uh, whew, I probably messed up something 
in three tests. Mm -hmm. Okay, then this one maybe will work better. Okay, and then here maybe I need to put the value, sorry. Ah, yeah, okay. Now I have everything here, and so in this case, uh, I have uh, both brands and countries in this visual, and if I pull the slicer up and put my value here, then, or not values, uh, sorry, axis. So now if I click on brands, it will show me only brands here. If I click on countries, it will show me all the countries. So sorry about this uh, uh, a little hassle that I created, but that's how we used to work and how we used to live with those requests to dynamically switch between uh, different attributes on X axis. Or also I will give you another example that I'm sure that all of us used at least once when you have two different measures and uh, your users, for example, want to see uh, total sales amount or total sales amount year to date within the same visual. Again, dynamically switching between those. So previously what we were doing, so creating again additional disconnected table. This is this concept of disconnected tables. So this one, let's call it selected time frame. Then let's introduce two columns, ID and uh, time frame. I will have two, just two options in my case. One will be monthly and one will be year to date. I'll load this table to my data model. You need to feel the pain of us before field parameters. So <laughs> that's why I'm demonstrating this. Okay, so let me find this one. Uh, so, uh, selected time frame and let's create a new measure within this column. I will explain what this measure, why this measure is useful. So I'll call this measure uh, selected time frame and it equals minimum of ID value from our time frame. That means uh, we want to capture the selection of the 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 uh, of our user within the selected time frame table, and based on this selection, we will then use another measure to dynamically switch between uh, sales amount and sales amount year to date. So how it's done? Basically, I'll now go to my online sales table again. Let's create a new measure, and I'll call this one sales amount um, time frame. And it equals, so now I'm using this magical switch function. And as a first argument, so I want to capture this selected time frame uh, uh, choice from the user. And then I would say if it's one, then I want to return sales amount. If it's two, I want to return sales amount year to date. Simple as that. But you will see that it can be even simpler with field parameters. So what's going to happen now, I will remove this regular sales amount measure and I'll put this one sales amount uh, time frame. Is that the one? Yeah, on the values. So now by default and one last thing to put the slicer and grab from my selected time frame, I will put time frame on the slicer. So now by default, because uh, ID one, which is the minimum value, if nothing is selected, by default will be displayed this monthly overview. So watch out what's happening here. If I select year to date, you see now data for year to date is displayed and we can go back and forth. That's how we did in dark edges of Power BI. Either exotic DAX with free tests or switching like a pro with those uh, disconnected tables. Okay, so uh, that was two very simple examples, very two common uh, and frequent business requests uh, that you saw how we, uh, uh, what kind of magic we need to apply to solve this very simple, very simple request. And these two examples best illustrate how important was the request from the report consumer side. 
to have the possibility to dynamically change the data, uh, the way that the data is displayed. And that's where field parameters come to the rescue. Game changer. So how many times you've heard this during Power BI evolution? If you ask me, at least 50 features were considered as something that will truly change the way uh, that uh, uh, how we are doing things in Power BI. However, not all, not all of them live up to their, those high expectations. Uh, reasons are different, of course, uh, but let's be honest and admit that most of these features were just a nice addition, nothing more, nothing less. With field parameters, I'm pretty sure it's different, not just because they eliminate uh, the necessity of applying various workarounds, like I've shown you in previous two examples, they also open a whole new world of perspectives. But also, and what is even more important, in my opinion, from a data modeling point of view, not just from data visualization, but also from data modeling point of view. I'll show you in a few minutes in one demo what I'm talking about. But before being able to get the maximum from field parameters, we need to make ourselves familiar with this new kid on the block, right? So let's see what are field parameters and what happens behind the scenes once you start using this feature. So in a nutshell, field parameters enables you to perform two actions. First is to dynamically change the attribute for, for slicing and dicing data in the visual, meaning dynamically switch between different columns. The second thing is dynamically change the metrics displayed in the visual, meaning dynamically switch between different measures. I hear you, I hear you, Nicola, we could have done this prior to field parameters as well. Yes, that's true, but instead of three task complexity or writing complex and verbose switch statements index, you can now set everything up with just a few clicks uh, and without writing a single line of DAX code, as you will see. So let me show you on previous two examples, same examples, how field parameters saves significant portion of your time and effort. So I'll go again to Power BI Desktop and here is exactly the same report page. And here the idea is to dynamically switch between uh, brand names and countries, right? So how do you access uh, field parameters? If you go to modeling tab on the top and choose new parameter, I'll select fields. Don't forget if you don't see this fields option under new parameter, that's because you didn't turn it on uh, in preview features in options. So first, that's the first step. OK, so I'll call this one country. Country brand. And I'll take from my uh, product table, I'll take brand name and from my geography table, I'll take region country name. OK, and add, but by default, add slicer to this page is checked. So in most cases, you will leave this option checked. In some circumstances, you may want to disable it. I will show you one demo where you may go without adding slicer to a page. So I'll hit create. And what will happen in the background is that, of course, we will get our slicer here with brand name and region country name. So if I click here, nothing happens, of course, because this is just a parameter without any meaning at this moment. But look what we have here in our uh, fields area on the right hand side. So I have this brands and countries table that looks slightly different than the others. You see this calculator icon. That means that this is, oh, sorry, that's wrong table. So which one is? I forgot. Ah, it's country brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. So this one is, uh, maybe I can click on it. And there is a definition uh, of our table. There is only one visible column. We will come soon to explain uh, what columns you get out of the box once you create field parameters. But once I put this country brand column that is visible, this one also has cal calculator icon. That's why I mix them. Uh, so if I put this, uh, on the Y axis instead of brand name. Look what happens. I have my brands here listed and if I hit region country name, I have countries. So instead of writing this awful three test DAX formula, I just clicked 
I don't know, maybe 10 times in total, and I get, I'm get i getting the same outcome. That's for this case. Let me show you for this example here, where we want to switch between different measures. So again, I will go to modeling, new parameter, fields, and let's call this one measures. And uh, we need to take sales amount and sales amount year to date. Again, I will add slicer to this report page. Here it is. Again, nothing happens if I click. But once I go and find this measures table, let's put these measures here instead of sales amount, so on the values. And you see now I'm, uh, uh, of course, this should be renamed not to be sales amount uh, uh, and sales amount year to date, but monthly and year to date. But look what happens with the numbers here once I click on sales amount year to date. So you see, we have this calculation year to date. Basically, without writing switch, without introducing additional table and so on, just by selecting and creating field parameters. So as I promised, let's take a quick look under the hood of field parameters creation and what happens behind the scenes. So once you drag the columns and or measures in the field parameters window, Power BI will automatically create a new table in your data model, the table that looks exactly like I've shown you previously. You may also choose to automatically create a slicer that will contain all the values from the field parameter, and you can use that slicer on the report page. Uh, this table, this automatically generated table, consists of three built-in columns. Uh, maybe before we proceed, just to show you so view hidden and those are two hidden columns measures so this is the name of my parameters table measures and then i have fields and order those two columns are hidden by default so those three columns that we have our first one is called uh, name basically that's the name of the column and this column leverages name of dax function uh, name of fun function in DAX returns the fully qualified name of the model object. Why is this important? Let's say that you want to change the column name from brand to brand name. Uh, you can do that without violating the field's parameter structure because the name of function will still return the new name of the object. Displayed name stays unchanged, but it will refer to an underlying object with a different name. So that's why this uh, name of uh, uh, function in field parameters is very important. And the third column is a numeric one and represents the order of the elements within field parameters starting from zero. So it's zero, one, two, and so on. Okay, these three are provided out of the box once you create field parameters. However, as this is nothing else but a table, you can also manually extend this table with additional columns. If you're wondering why this may be interesting, let me show you a quick demo. So again, I'll go to Power BI desktop and let's move here. So again, this report page looks exactly the same, but what I wanted to show you is how you can bring some life to it. So I'll create create my field parameter again. So let's go to modeling, new parameter, fields, and let's grab uh, uh, fields and uh, measures from different tables. So I'll go first to, uh, not to premium, sorry, to product and grab brand name and grab uh, from, let's say from product category, I will take product category name. Then for example, from geography, I'll take continent name and country name and finally from my date dimension i'll take year and i'll take month name short so i have six six different categories within my field parameter okay and let's create this again i will i will get my uh so i didn't rename this parameter uh uh field parameter table, never mind, let's call it parameter for this example. So now if we put this, uh, let's find it, parameter, it's here, 
So, and if I put this on Y axis, now you see that by default it's displayed year, so I can switch between continent, month name, year, brand name, and so on and so on. Now, when I told you that you can extend the built-in, uh, the features that are provided by default to you uh, from Power BI, I mean that you can add some additional columns to your table. And for example, what you can do, if I click on the table here, here is the definition of my table. So what I can do, I can, for example, add here product and product category name. I will also add product. Here continent, I will add geo and here I will add geo. And for year, let's add, for example, calendar. And here, for example, let's add calendar. I will just confirm this and you will see that here on the right hand side. Once this is done, there is another column, additional column, which is called value four. This is a stupid name, so I will change this to, let's say, group. OK, and. Why this can be useful, for example, you may want to uh, group your uh, uh, your parameters, your attributes within the parameter uh, table. So, for example, here, if I go and put this group over parameter, now they are sorted in groups. Like now you can expand, for example, calendar and choose year. Then you can expand this one and select continent name and so on and so on. But I have a better approach to this. So instead of writing this boring text, what else you can do is to leverage uni, uh, unihar uh, function from DAX that will basically return the visual representation of the numeric value that you provide. So what I'm talking about, for example, here I can just type unihar and uh, I already prepared those numbers in advance. Don't think that I'm uh, so smart to know them uh, from top of my head. So this one is, for example, for products. So what will happen? DAX will substitute this numeric value with visual representation uh, of, of this value. Let me just put here another one. Let me check it's 17757. And this is our geography. Okay, and finally, for calendar, I'll put okay. I'll, mm -hmm. One more, and here I need to put again Unihar. Yet it, it's one two eight one nine eight. Okay, and I'm missing one bracket here, and this is the final one. So what will happen now? Watch out on this slicer. I have nice icons that groups my data. So this one is for calendar. This one is for products and this one is for geography. Feel free to grab whatever you want. This is just an idea to to yeah, make more your your reports look more fancy, I would say. OK, so that was the one thing that I wanted to show you. And the other thing that I want to show you uh, is uh, how to leverage this matrix uh, that users can combine different data on both columns and rows. So this matrix will become fully dynamic. So everything can be adjusted by uh, using field parameters. OK, this one I will I will uh, leave here as it is and I will create another uh, field parameters with exactly the same values. Let's call this one parameter uh, two. Never mind. And let's go to product. So we had brand name. We had uh, product category name. Then we had from geography, right? We had continent and we had country. And then we had also from date uh we had year and month name short so that's exactly the same and in this case i will again put this slicer on the report page but what i'm going to do now 
is to go to slicer settings. And for this slicer, I will enable single selection. OK, so by default now when I put uh, values from this slicer on the columns, so it's parameter two, I'll put that on columns. By default, it will be brand name. And here for rows, I will take the value from parameter one, the first table I created, and get rid of years and month name short. So I just want to put my parameter here. And now what's happening here? I have sales amount per brand name because this is default. Let's do some combinations. So now I can choose, for example, to display continents on the on the on the uh, within the rows and brand names as columns. Then, for example, let's switch to product category and now here put year, for example. Then let's go here and select year on the on the rows and brand name on the on the column level. So you can play around and literally achieve any possible scenario that user can imagine just by introducing two field parameters table. No DAX, nothing. So just clicking here and there, clicky, clicky, draggy, droppy, and everything works. That's why I like field parameters. OK, I want to show you a few more things that you can do with uh, field parameters or how to solve some, some common challenges, I would say. Maybe it's, it's better to say it this way. Let's move to another uh, another report page again, exactly uh, looking exactly the same. So in this case, I would say one of the request is requests that you need to solve is to display the selection from uh, your slicer. So when user clicks on the slicer, you need to display uh, this value to 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 an end user in another visual to use it in a title or whatever. So what are we doing when we have a regular uh, slicer like this one. So, for example, I'm selecting Contoso and let me create quickly one measure. Let's put it in. Um, I put it in online sales. Never mind. No, not no new column. My bad. No new column. Thank you. I don't want it. So it's new measure. And you simply put something like selected value. Slicer equals selected value. And this is brand name. And. Maybe let's let's introduce something more complicated like you selected. Ah, not here. The beginning, so like this. You selected and this one. So do concatenation and once I put card visual on the report page and let's find this one select value slicer. You selected Contoso, you selected Fabricam, and then you display what was selected in the slicer. Now if I use my parameters, this one, for example, if I go here and put my parameters in the slicer and I want to display selected value from here. So let's change this uh, measure. Let me find it. Select value slicer. And in this case, you selected selected value and I want to display this is parameter and it's parameter. So if we want to do something like this. It won't work. So it's not as simple as with regular slicer, but there is a solution and that's what I wanted to show you in this demo. So how you can uh, recreate uh, the behavior of selected value measure. Uh, in this case, field parameters require more complexity than the regular slicer, but I, I guess that's uh, one of the rare cases where you need to to uh, to apply this more complex logic than in the regular regular uh, 
ah, I need to write it. I don't know why copy paste doesn't work for me. Never mind. So in this case, I will take select. Uh, I will call this measure cell value, and let's first define uh, one variable which we'll call as you may expect selected value and it equals so I'll need to select the columns. OK, so I'm not happy because also IntelliSense seems doesn't uh, seems not to work. So I will use summarize and then I will provide the. Uh, name of the table, then uh, name of the column. OK. It's called parameter, right? And then again. Parameter. And then. Parameter by fields. Uh, parameter fields without by sorry parameter fields that's the hidden column that we need to use uh, uh, in this example so uh, comma and then let's try and see if this this is going to work so this one is parameter and parameter okay uh, closing this and returning uh, the following thing so you selected that's the thing we already had in our previous case. You selected to uh, uh, that one, and so if and we now counting rows from my from our uh, variable. So if selected value, then if not selected, I hope this is work. This is going to work. You're missing um, a single quote in the parameter fields as it's spelled right. So the, de the demo gods are being really cruel to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, thanks for the. Uh, here. Um, nope, but look a little further to see the parameter table name um, on row three. You, you need to open and close your single quote. Your single quote ended up in the wrong spot. Um, so table name, single quote there. Table name? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, I, I realized, yeah, 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 here. Yeah, and then check out the spelling of parameter fields. Um, yeah. <laughs> in row two, there you go. Thanks. Sorry, sorry, I was just I like, breaking my no, heart. I like, this team. I like this teamwork, thank heart. you. Thank you, Gina, thank you. <gasps> Okay, I didn't confirm. Fields. Okay, that's what happens when you do demo live. Let's see if now it if it now works. Fields. Uh, yes. No. So fields is I, one of those English words that's cruelly spelled with entirely. Fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fe yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. So you've selected region country name, you've selected year, you've selected product category name. So you can play around and you can, uh, with help of your friends, like I had uh, now, you can uh, produce the same outcome like with regular selected value. Once again, thanks for the assistance. Uh, Another thing that I wanted to show you is conditional formatting with field parameters because it's not so straightforward like uh, uh, like regular with regular conditional formatting. And I want to show you uh, if I create a new one. Uh, so let's let's clean it a little bit because it becomes too cluttered with all these. Uh, field parameters tables, so I will remove all of them. Not rename. Delete. Then mirrors. What else those two with parameter? OK, delete. And I hope this is the last one. 
Okay. Now that looks better. Now that looks better. Okay, so let's create a new field parameter, modeling, new parameter, fields. If you learn something to, today, it's how you create field parameters, modeling and new parameter, field parameter. So what I want to display is two different measures in my uh, um, field parameter, sales amount and uh, sales quantity. So basically nothing special. That's what I want to enable my users to be able to switch between sales amount and uh, uh, sales quantity within this matrix visual. And you, you saw how easy it is to do, but for example, for doing conditional formatting, uh, when you have regular measure like sales amount, so without field parameters, without anything, you just click on this small arrow and there is an option for conditional formatting. However, if I go here now again to parameter and put this parameter here instead of sales amount, and I show sales amount, so these are the same numbers as we have previously. And if I now go to my matrix and try to uh, conditionally format my values, there is no option for conditional formatting. But it's super easy. Go to format, uh, formatting panel, format your visual, sell elements, and then you say just apply settings to serious sales amount and turn on whatever uh, conditional formatting property you want. For example, let's turn on data bars and you see it works. Also, that's for sales amount. If I select sales quantity, now I see sales quantity. I need to do the same thing for sales quantity, but just once. So again, let's turn on data bars. Now we see data bars for sales quantity. And now I can go back and forth and conditional formatting is working. So that's a nice little trick that if someone tells you, no, don't use field parameters, you do, you can't, you can't do conditional formatting. Yes, you can, and it's super easy. So that's why I wanted to uh, to show you this one. Last demo for uh, for today is uh, remember when I told you that field parameters are cool for data visualization and stuff like that, playing around with axes and measures and so on, but they are also great for data modeling. So let me show you. Uh, what I'm talking about. So here I have different table, uh, which is called premium. So this is a very, very simple table. Let me show you. Uh, that has six rows and for all the different dummy products, we have information about earned premium and written premium in three different currencies, Euro, USD and US dollars and local currency. So those numbers are, of course, uh, uh, completely, uh, yeah, completely dummy. Don't pay attention. It's just to show you uh, how you can model your data and get uh, uh, take advantage of field parameters feature uh, to, to, to take you uh, where you want to go. So now what is the idea? The idea is to enable users that uh, they have slicer like this. And one more two slicers. I still didn't populate them. I will explain why. So this is from the real life case that uh, I implemented maybe three weeks ago. So what is the idea? There is a slicer which is populated from the table called currency. And this table has just one column. And in that column we have Euro, we have USD and we have local. That's our currency table. Let's see, pretend that this is currency dimension. OK, so this is currency table. And when I put currency in this uh, here, I have Euro local and USD. I have another table, again, one dimension table. I will just mimic how it looks. So this is premium type. And I have again just one column. We will not complicate it with additional attributes. So I have two possible values earned and written. If you are working in insurance industry, you are probably familiar with those uh, with those uh, phrases earned and written premium. So this is our premium type and our premium type goes in this slicer. Now what's the idea? If the user clicks on Euro, 
it should show him only earned premium in euro and written premium in euro. So if we click on euro, I want to see this column and this column. Additionally, if I click on written here, I want to see just this column. If I select multiple currencies like euro and USD and leave it as it is with written, I want to see uh, this one, this one, and that's it, written in euro and USD, but dynamically. So how can you solve this? Let's go to our data model. Let's find find our tables. Um, mm -hmm. Here they are. OK, I have my. Premium and I have this one. And what I need to do now is to uh, go to uh, create field parameters. So I will go. I forgot to create uh, field parameters, so I'll go to uh, modeling new parameter fields. And then let's call this one premium demo. And I'll go to my premium table and put all of my measures here. Local USD, written Euro, written local, written premium USD. This time, you remember I told you most of the times you will include the slicer on the page. Now I don't want slicer on this page. I want existing slicers. So these slicers are also filtering another data on this page. And I want those slicers that my customer already have on the report page. So I will uncheck this option and create this field parameters table. Let's expand this table. So in this case, what we have here, we have euro. So my currency is euro and my premium type is earned, right? So let's copy and paste here. This time we have local currency and we have earned premium. And finally we have USD and earned premium. Now we are moving to written premium. So we have a different set of combinations. So we have Euro and we have written premium type. Then let's copy this one. And let's copy it here. So this one is local and written, and this one is USD and written. So I expanded my original field parameters table. Let's confirm this. Okay. That should be okay. And now I have these dummy names for my columns. So let's rename this value for to uh, this will be currency and value five will be premium type. Are you okay with timings? I hope yes. Okay, so uh, where is our premium demo? Okay, so let me zoom it a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing. I'll expand this one and then I'll create relationships between my basically dimension table. And this is my in this case, this is mimic of my fact table. So premium type will go to premium type and currency go to currency. So I have one to many regular relationships. All good. So now what happened here? If I remove all those things from here and just take my premium demo and put it here. So if I click on Euro, you see I have earned premium Euro, written premium Euro. If I click on local, I see earned premium local and written premium local. Let's click just on written and local. It's written and local. If it's earned and written, then both of them. If it's USD and earned, then it's earned and uh, earned premium local, earned premium USD. I can also combine. So I can do all kinds of combinations this time everything is done through data model. So once I select the currency, this filter will filter my table and display only those data that I need also for premium type. So you control everything through data model and filters. 
that was the last demo. So few more things. Uh, I guess we are all super excited about field parameters and thinking about now we are hopefully thinking about uh, uh, infinite number of use cases in our Power BI solutions. However, there are certain limitations and considerations to be aware of. Uh, the first question that pops up is regarding the performance. And I will immediately tell you that there is no performance difference between using field parameters and regular column. Because once the Power BI retrieves the list of the columns from the field parameters table, it will use regular columns in the query. So it will reference the regular columns in the query. Uh, let's examine the limitations of this feature. Uh, first of all, so that was it. First of all, if you are using analyze in Excel feature at this point in time, once more, at this point in time, you can forget about taking advantage of field parameters. Uh, because Excel uses MDX to populate pivot tables, it's not it's not even aware of field parameters. And I would say that this is currently the biggest limitation uh, of the field parameters feature. But stay tuned. As I said, they're introducing uh, uh, new and new features. Maybe once it becomes generally available, we will also have support for uh, for analyzing Excel with field parameters. Any questions? Have you seen anything on the um, on the analyze in Excel front? I mean, have you seen people murmuring about that in terms of, hey, but that's coming on field parameters? Or um, do we think this is probably going to be a, a Power BI specific just because of the fanciness? Yeah, of, I don't uh, know. So at this do? moment, it's hard to predict how this will uh, how this will pr uh, work. Uh, sure. From the pure language perspective, uh, because this is M, uh, here is MDX in analyzing Excel. Here is oh, well, right. DAX based. Right. No chance at this moment, but who knows? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Uh, well, let me great. walk through the chat. Maybe there will there were some questions in chat. Yes, I have a question. If you could uh, show the relationship you just built, please. Yes, yes, sure. This one. Yes. So it's relationship one to many between currency here and currency here and between premium type and premium type. Ah, easy. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, the key thing is to extend to extend field parameters table manually with those two additional columns. That's it. You can use more than two. This was a, just example with two, but you can use more than two and create literally full star schema with with this uh, uh, field parameters table in the middle. Great tip, thanks. And then I have another limitation that I tried. Um, you cannot use field parameters with drill through. OK, mm, I didn't try that, to be honest. Could be, could I be did. true. And, and it was not in the documentation and someone made a a question in the com in the Power BI community, and then they updated the documentation stating that by now drill through doesn't work. Ah, okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. So uh, I I didn't try then, therefore I didn't know. But uh, thank you. I, I'll include that in in the presentation as well. Then there, as a limitation. Yes, great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So I was doing just to be honest. I was doing this presentation for first time. So <laughs> see you in SQL bits, my friend. Hopefully, yeah. I hope they will choose me so yeah. And that I get the UK visa. <laughs> hey Elena, I think Gaston and Andrew had to drop. So do you want to wrap us up? Yeah. Um, well, thank you, Nicola, for joining us. Um, and doing some very impressive live writing of DAX. That was definitely, even in your Dark Ages portion, that was like <laughs> astronomically faster than anyone else I've ever seen write DAX. So, <laughs> and Thanks, thank you for yeah. coming on late night to do this call. This was a super awesome presentation. And thank um, you. Thank you. Yeah. Happy holidays to everybody. Uh, keep an eye out for new invites coming at the beginning of 2023.
thank you everyone thanks for joining and thanks for having me thanks Nicola. thanks everyone thanks have a great day thank you bye bye, -bye.